time I'll call the meeting to order. And the board will stand in place of the back. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, tonight uh, Carol will not be with us. Her mother passed away on Sunday, I guess, so she is not. And Mike will be taking the minutes. So you get the roll call at this time. Okay, uh, Jerry Long? Here. Arthur Zerby? Here. David Leinbach? Here. Uh, Elizabeth McGovern? Here. And Michael Reiner is here. Carol Martin is absent. Okay, at this time uh, we have a community our public comment session, and I limit it to four minutes each individual. So at this time you'll be given an opportunity to speak. We'll give everyone a chance to speak, and then the board can respond accordingly. So is there anyone who wish to speak tonight in the public um, comment session? Yes, just state your name for the... Jared Artist, Deputy Fire Chief for Five Points Old Fire Company. Um, it's been brought to our attention you guys are well aware that the county has switched radio systems to the P25 system. Um, that's been in effect now for about the last year, year or so. Um, with that being said, uh, going in the future, December 31st, 2020, they're forcing all the fire companies to switch to a P25 pager at the cost of roughly about $750 a pager. So we're looking between us and between Five Pointville and Bowensville, we're looking at roughly about forty thousand dollars each company is going to be spending for pagers just to alert our members that there's actually a call. Um, so we just wanted to kind of make the township aware that uh, that this is kind of an expense that we're going to be going through here in the next probably year, year and a half. Um, it was something that. We don't really have a choice in. Um, we're kind of being forced to it, and unfortunately, it is what it is. What does uh, P25 mean or stand for? That's just the, the frequency that they're using. Basically, it's it's not really a high band frequency. That it's uh, it's it's what three or four hundred somewhere around in there. It's not really what we have. It's a higher band, but there's still dead spots. Brecon Township is known for dead spots just because of the hills. Um, unfortunately, wherever we don't have coverage with a P25 radio, we're not gonna have coverage for our pagers either, which that would include like Yellow Hill, out towards Maple Grove Raceway. Berks County, we don't get it more than a mile into the county. So it's kind of a frustration that we've been living through for a little bit. So right now, the county commissioners have it under their plate to possibly do something for us. I mean, it's, it's every company in the whole county. Like you said, Bonesville is by far the worst uh, between us and Adamstown and Churchtown. We're the three that have the most problems. Uh, there are buildings that our radios don't work in. The, the newest and best radios won't, won't work. So basically, we brought it up to the at the fire chief's meeting brought up to the radio board and said are we less important than Manheim Township, you know, Hemfield. And they basically said, you have another channel you can switch over to, but we don't know when we're going to lose radio contact. More likely you're going to be inside the building when you lose contact. Which that becomes a safety issue. So there's two issues. One is coverage. One is coverage and one is the expense of the page of pagers. Yeah. What do they say the new tower would cost? They could put a tower up to help us, but they won't. Because it's in the millions. It's like three million dollars to put a new tower up. Well, if there's anything we can do to help that process, let us know. Thanks for making us aware of it. Any questions? Yeah. I guess you discussed it already in your meetings. You discussed it oh, yeah, already. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and some some of this information is just so we had a zone meeting last today's Tuesday, right? Last night we had a zone meeting, and 
some of that information was just shared with us there and also at the county chief's meeting. Was it uh, brought up already about township assistant in paying some of it already? No, not no. as of yet. Nothing. Nothing was mentioned for Brecknock Township, put it to you that way. But we just want to make you guys aware that that's an expense we're going to be having going it is, forward. It is possible we might get some help from the county. At this point, we haven't got a yes or a no, so it's kind of still in limbo. But we just want to keep you guys updated as best as possible. And this will be December? Next year. Next December, not December. Yeah, so they gave us a year. However, they also stated that at the end of the month, the pagers are going up another $50. Shocker over there. So, you yeah. know, it might be smart if it's possible to get grant. Well, I think well, we're, we're going to have to see. What, I, we appreciate you bringing it to our attention, but I guess there's still some things. There's still some stuff we need to go through. Yeah. However, we just want to let you guys know that we're going to try and do all everything we can to get government assistance um, for the county commissioners or what have you. We're going to try and go through all that avenues first and exhaust all that. I think what Nelson said was we just applied for a federal grant and sometimes you don't get it two years from now. Yeah. Some companies do. I'm pretty sure Bonesville won't. And we just applied for a very big one from federal. So if we don't get any help there, we're out for grant or anything. But uh, Nelson was saying maybe about going as a township to the federal grant. Like if you attach both companies together with the township's name, that, that would help the fire company itself. Did was there any talk consideration to go to the state rep, Mark Gillen? They were all there. Yeah. Oh, they were all there. Yeah, right? okay. Okay. Yeah, so the county commissioners, the new fire commissioner was there, all the reps were there. I mean, basically any legislator that was in Lancaster County was basically at that meeting. Because um, obviously we're not the only two fire companies dealing with the same issue. Is, there's other fire companies that have dead spots, probably. Well, not as much as, not we're, as we're, the worst. we're the worst. These three are the worst in the whole county. These three. Churchtown, Adamstown, and Bonesville. And like he said, Maple Grove, we're out. Uh, we went to Burks County to try and get a radio. It's possible. It's very possible. The same radio covers Burks and Lancaster County, but it's a political game that they're playing, and they will not issue us a Burks County radio. So it's almost forcing, you know, the public sees us not running the closest fire company. That's because we have no communication with the closest fire company. Back Maple Grove, you're not going to see us working with Right, not like we would like to because of the, the game that the politicians are playing with their radio frequencies. It becomes a, a huge safety factor, especially on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Bowmansville covers from basically all, all the way down to Morgantown on the eastbound lanes. And once you get down past there, you have no radio coverage. I heard, I heard the same thing. It cost close to a million dollars to put a tower in. Town to eliminate some of them dead spots. But we'll keep us posted. Yeah, is there anything we can comes across to our attention? Actually, likewise. Actually, if, if there's any new information almost every month, you ought to know it. You know it. Yeah, yeah. If every month. Well, and that's why we're trying to be proactive and yeah. just kind of not throw it on where nobody was aware of it now suddenly come to you and say, hey, guess what, we've exhausted everything. So. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, yeah, just state your name. Bill not a little on Horizon Drive. Um, I'm curious, we have a uh, swell issue in that section. We have an underground waterway, I want to call it black one, that I believe you folks came out to check out a year ago, said it was working perfectly. My neighbors and I are digging trenches to get water to get to a swell or get to a drain, uh, in the, just on that street alone and behind my house. So 
I'm, I'm just wondering if someone can come, come out and take a look at just Horizon Drive for what I know of and see how that water system's working or not working. I mean, I'm getting my driveway redone this spring because I've got a pothole on my driveway from the water just rolling and sitting there. It's not going into the drain pipes. It's not going, it's not sinking into the underground piping that they said they have underneath there. It's not doing anything but it's rolling across my yard that's the same as Oakfield too. I have the same problem. I believe Carol sent some photos to you, Mike. I've received nothing. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, this is the first I'm hearing about it. I, I sent Carol an email with some photos as well. My backyard is the same way. It's like a pond. Uh, can't get any grass, any roots. There's definitely a swale issue, like Bill said that needs to be addressed. Standard procedure. I have in front of my house. I literally, you, you, there is a set system there that's just, the only reason why the drain fills up the water is not from the system that is underneath, it's because the rain's coming into it. The other part of the system is just not working, it's not going. Like I said, I have neighbors actually hand digging issues to try to get it through. As I was going to say, the standard procedure is to submit a complaint to the township in writing about what the issue is, and then if we're directed to go out, we'll go out. Um, I do know that in the past we've had issues with subsurface uh, runoff from groundwater, uh, which we do not regulate. So that, it, that may be part of the issue. I don't know that for certain until we go out. I do know that there's, pro there's a property two houses down from mine that the swell seems to be have, have been filled in. Um, it's probably a foot higher than everybody else's property, and mysteriously that's dry. And it just puddles, puddles the whole way back up through. So. We're going to add something. Horizon. Okay, you go in behind Weaver Store, and you get to Horizon, you make a left. Yep. Which house do you live? I'm on the fifth house up on the left. On the left. Okay. Because I've worked across the street already. I've worked across the street already. You want to put the dog in his yard? What's his name? Weaver? Was it Weaver? I don't know his last name. His last name is his first name. But it's his yard. He, there's, there's no piping underneath their yard. Mine has, my side has the, the, the green line going underneath it. That's not working at all. He went in there and supposedly checked a year ago. And like I said, the only water that ever fills up in the, the drainage issues are what's coming from the side. Nothing, nothing from the ground going in and moving like it's supposed to. Problem with the pipe. And it runs all the way up the whole street and all the way down. You can it's all the way down. I said I got a pot all my driveway and everything just from it. Well, that's a stormwater pipe that goes down to the corner of country, horizon in the country, and that's a pretty good sized pipe. Well, it's bigger than that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, well as, as our township engineer said, submit a, a, a notify the township office um, what the problem is. We're not responsible for private property. And when the developer puts in a development and puts in the stormwater <coughs> stuff and that, and then turns over the street for us, we do not take responsibility for all outside the street. We were informed last year, we, we did call in about this and came to check out that it was part of the system the township put in, or was told to put in, part of the swell, and then put it in front of there. And since it was five feet, not even five feet from the road, it was their, they informed us it was their property, not mine. They take care of it. So. Well, again, um, we can uh, talk, talk to the, the office. Um, and then we can take a look at it and have Mike, Mike come out and take a look at it. But, um, you know, we're just, we're just, Graham's guessing that stuff now, right here. It's been the wettest, wettest year record, so a lot of you had wet, you wet yards. We can't control that. But if there's a problem with the system, we can help you identify it. But whether or not we're responsible for it is, is another, another decision. Yeah. Anyone else? Same thing with him if he wants to submit. Yeah, my yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, Carol did a form of it. I sent her an email, so I'm sure it might be able to eventually. Obviously, with her death and her family. Was it recent that you submitted it? 
last week. So, so last August, week, okay. she was the only that's probably, yeah, probably. That's, that's, that, that would make sense. Which is understandable. Right. Okay. This time we'll move on to our agenda items. We have a public hearing uh, scheduled for tonight. And I'll ask our solicitor just explain that the legal parts of it have been taken care of. Sure. Um, this is a zoning ordinance amendment, and this amendment was uh, given to the local county planning commission for review. Our township planning commission also reviewed it. The supervisors authorized the advertisement of this ordinance amendment, and it was advertised in the paper twice as per the municipality's planning code. It was, um, I'll just briefly describe it, and I'll turn it back over to the chairman. This is amending uh, the residential medium district to revise lot area and density regulations for townhouses and apartments by amending Article 7, Section 11039, entitled Residential Uses to revise the performance regulations related to townhouse and apartment dwellings. So I'll turn it back over to the chairman to uh, basically describe what this is all about and how the supervisors and planning commission came up with this amendment. Yeah, this, this I would maybe classify as almost a curative amendment. It was uh, something to cure or to fix some discrepancies in the uh, existing township zoning ordinance which was uh, and it only applies to the RM district and it only applies to townhouses and apartments the uh, I found out that the our zoning ordinance from 19 late 1970s 1980s had exactly the same language that was currently and it, we did not have a maximum density for apartments uh, we did have a maximum density for townhouses but then we had a discrepancy at one place we said townhouses uh, the definition of townhouses was one unit or I mean three units and not more than six units another place in our ordinance it said townhouses shall not be more than ten so we just simply corrected that and in our RM the maximum number of townhouses in one single structure would be six and then the maximum density of townhouses per acre in our ordinance was 10, but it said 10 unless they're on individual lots, which meant there was no there was no density, there was no maximum density if they were on individual lots. So we cut, clarified that and basically said the maximum density of townhouses is 10, 10 per acre, whether they're on individual or lots or not. Um, the other thing we added, there was no maximum density for apartments. We've added the maximum density for apartments is eight per acre. And um, we just had a uh, uh, resident uh, is attempting to put eight on an acre and that pretty much maxes that out. That's pretty much, uh, uh, so that is, is a good guideline. And then the other thing, um, again, this only applies to townhouses and apartments where the minimal lot size will be 10,000 square feet. Um, and that applies to apartments and townhouses. You could have you could have three townhouses on that 10,000 square feet, but it kind of eliminates the the, uh, the very small 2,000 square foot lots, which um, that 2,000 square foot a lot you could have you could have 24 per acre, and it was a density that is more suitable for public water, areas that have public water. And so um, that's just like, a, like we stated, it's about four or five or six little uh, corrections that are just made to clarify this. And that's why I kind of call it a little bit of a correction to the existing uh, zoning ordinance. So this is a public time for any use that might have questions concerning this before the, the board would deliberate. Any father on this? Like I say, townhouse and apartments are only permitted in the RM district, which is one of our largest residential districts. It encompasses pretty much Bonesville and and Five Pointville, and it only this only applies to apartments and townhouses. It just uh, 
eliminates the real severe density in those areas. Okay, any discussion with the board? As our solicitor said, the, uh, it was a, recommend a recommendation by the Planning Commission to make the changes, and Lancaster County Planning Commission both acknowledged that it is consistent both with their county comprehensive plan and it's consistent with the um, um, Elanco Regional Comprehensive Plan. Discussion. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, recommendation of our planning commission and we acknowledge the county's uh, statement that is consistent with both their comprehensive plan and our comprehensive plan and we adopt this uh, these changes to the amendment and adopt ordinance number 221-19 Okay, we had a motion and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, at this time we have guests here tonight. We have Hershey surveying and we have two guests, I mean representing two, two individuals. So if you want to just go from one right to the next, that would be great. We have the uh, hilltop. Good <clears throat> evening, my name is Ron Hershey, I'm a Hershey survey. So, uh, tonight we're processing, uh, going through a lot of add on plan uh, for uh, Blakely and Sesnick. Uh, they live at uh, 1341 Hilltop. Their existing property is this property in the middle, right here. They recently purchased this property. Uh, one of the reasons to buy this was to acquire a little additional land that was back behind this property. Um, as we were going through the process, we also identified uh, an encroachment. This is kind of going up the hill in the woods. Property lines probably weren't real closely um, distinguishable when they built different things. So there's a, a utility building that's over here that's just over the property line. So as part of this plan, we're trying to clean that up as well. That's a, a 33, uh, 0.33 acres that was acquired from the uh, Schlock property. Um, there's another property, down, another portion of this property was added to this just to give them a little more frontage out, out front. Um, so the remaining lands uh, of lot two will be a little bit over two acres, which is this piece. Um, the Blakely's property, which is here in the middle, uh, resulting land will be uh, 5.3 acres um, in this area. Um, and uh, we've got three acres left over here for the, uh, for the Schlock property after the add on the third of the acre on that side. Uh, we have received comments um, from the township. We really don't have any issues with uh, any of those comments. Um, if you want me to go through any of them, I can go ahead to. Um, but again, I don't see any issue with any of the comments or meeting the conditions of those comments. There's some waivers that we're looking at as well. Um, yeah, that's why I was just going to chime in. Uh, there was a recommendation by the Planning Commission for uh, two waivers and then also a conditional final plan. Uh, the waiver recommendations would be partial waiver for shoulder widening improvements. They are providing the ultimate right of way on the plan. Uh, recommendation of approval of the waiver request for monuments. Uh, they are providing iron pins in lieu of monuments. And the final recommendation was conditional final plan approval compliant on addressing the March 8th review comments in uh, my township engineer's letter. Does that, does that match yours to two uh, waiver requests? And That's one, correct. And one uh, conditional final. That's uh, correct. Yeah, partial one partial waiver request one partial and then waiver. One, yeah. one waiver for the monuments. Right. The partial would be the widening. Uh, the other half of that section of the ordinance refers to uh, additional right of way to uh, provide. Mm -hmm. Does the board have any uh, questions or comments? Mr. Hershey? Okay. 
This is all, no, no, if I remember correctly, this one's in ag and these are in forest rec, is that correct? Well, it's right on the yeah, they're, they're two different zones. Um, yeah, the Schlock is on the ag property, exactly. Yep, Schlock is on ag, but this is on the mm -hmm. Goes up here, and up here. Is that a lot individual by record? Yes. Not in. Not a track of a different piece. Of the one no. across the road. No, no, that's an individual lot. Individual lot. Yeah, yeah, individual lot. There's no improvements on it. Right. So, yeah. And what's the acreage left on that one? Uh, 3.1. <coughs> 3.3. motion that we uh, grant the two waiver requests, one partial and one for monuments, and then uh, also for the uh, conditional plan approval. Per the letter, and address all the comments dated March 26, 2019 by technical. I second it. Okay, the motion was made and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So the second second plan is a um, kind of a we'll call it a infill lot. It's up on Yellow Hill Road. This is um, this is 48 Yellow Hill Road. It's about I think two houses in from the quarry entrance. Maybe three houses in from the quarry entrance. This would be north of the quarry would be to the rear. There's some other residential properties that are down here, but it's just up from the quarry entrance. There used to be several years ago. There's a mobile home on this lot with a um, septic and well um, uh, and currently now there's a, a concrete pad there where the garage used to sit. Um, so we're trying to utilize this small lot. It's, it actually looks bigger than it is because this is like extremely huge scale but um, it, it's not a very big lot at all. It's uh, about two acres more or less but it's really not very wide. It's 200 feet wide uh, by 400 feet deep um, and it's very typical with the lots that are up there on that other side up there um, coming off that roof. Um, so what we're looking to do is put a, uh, a modular in, expand the existing stone driveway a little bit, and a proposed detached garage. Um, as part of this process, um, our area of disturbance is 13,700 square feet. Um, we're, we're looking to do this as a, as a small project component. Our new impervious is um, 2,800 square feet. So what we'd look to doing was propose uh, infiltration trench for the roof drains of both the garage and the house and the and the driveway. So we have a 1,400 square foot basically uh, building. We have a 720 square foot garage and about 1,000 square feet of this drive where we're going to a, a, um, an infiltration system um, for this lot. There has been soil testing done for the sanitary sewer. This location is back here in the back, which is also part of the disturbed area uh, for that sewage facility that's sitting there. We do have a comment letter from uh, Technicon uh, March 8th. Um, you want to take a look? Sorry. That's no, the hilltop one. one. <laughs> oh, apologies. We do have a letter from Technicon. It's not dated March 8th, it's dated March 25th. 25th, yes. Yep. And um, 
think the, the board, board did yeah. act on this that, that's correct. last month to oh, allow you to use a small project. The board of supervisors. Yes, did, yes. We, we did motion yes. on that last So month. I guess I'm looking at this. It says it says the board will, will approve it at a public meeting, which is the ninth. I don't know, was, it, was your prior meeting not? Right. Now, this was um, actually the meeting. I missed last month's meeting. You remember uh, being out sick. But the only thing on the agenda tonight for the board's action would be to accept the financial security recommendation and also approve the stormwater agreement. Okay. okay. So, so that, that would be part. We can still do that, do that okay. tonight, and okay. then you would be okay to go as far as building permits when they get Was submitted. there a submission from the contractor for the <coughs> cost estimate? I have that. Yeah, okay. yes, you have I do okay. have that. Harold called me and said, are you going to be here? Oh, okay. Well, I think it was yeah, normally I would actually okay. cover it under the, my engineer report. Okay. But, I mean, we can do it now. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sorry. So, this would actually be something I would cover under my engineer's report. Uh, yeah, they're just looking for approval of the stormwater management agreement, which they have submitted, and I have a recommendation of four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars to establish the financial security. Do you reference you reference a letter um, or a letter dated April fourth? April fourth would be. Did you letter. mention something about March twenty fifth? The March twenty fifth letter actually just is an approval letter for the stormwater, provided they pr give us the cost estimate and also the stormwater agreement. So tonight's action is just um, for the item, 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 item number five. And the number five. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, Carol asked me, I'm like, well, I'm going to be there anyway. <laughs> that's so, yeah, that's no problem. Sure. Number five. It would be number five of my engineer's report. make a motion that yeah. we accept the stormwater management agreement between Breaknock Township and Robert and Deborah Brooks in the amount of four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, we had the motion and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to jump out of order there. No, that's all right. <laughs> We've got number five and number nine taken care of. Yes, we're working on that. That's crossing the list off. Yeah, yeah. it's all the shorter list. That's all. It's all good. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, our next guest is uh, Pioneer Management. Good evening. I'm Todd Show for Pioneer. Okay. I'm here this evening with Mr. Aaron Hoover, the owner of AMA Enterprises, and his wife, Audrey. We were in front of the planning commission during the last meeting to discuss this project. Um, the Hoovers are the owners of the excavating business, and they currently own an 8.7 acre tract located at 1529 Redding Road. Um, the parcel is a landlocked parcel, zoned highway commercial. It's occupied by an existing residence and some barns, and the Hoovers are looking to relocate their existing excavation business onto the tract. Uh, they would live on the property and then also operate their business from the property. Um, the Hoovers had us master plan the project um, do quite a number of various layouts for their parcel and ultimately uh, the Hoovers came up with the configuration you see in front of you. The configuration consists of three uh, shop buildings, each consisting of approximately 11,460 square feet with a small office associated with it, a storage building which is about 9,600 square feet, and a shed which is uh, 2,400 square feet. There would be uh, ample room for uh, truck turning and maneuvering, also for construction equipment storage. The parcel is a landlocked parcel, and it's located on the west side of, of Reading Road. Um, immediately across from Reading Road is the electric station. And the access to the tract is via an existing driveway, which is about 10 feet wide, and it's encompassed by an existing 50-foot right-of-way. And that right-of-way actually has a cul-de-sac fall at the end. Um, with this proposal, the Hoovers would propose to widen the access drive to 24 foot wide where it connects to Reading Road. Obviously, they need to get a PennDOT permit, which we're in the process of doing the PennDOT HOP. And then it would neck down after a distance of 100 feet to a width of 16 feet. Uh, the overall drive length is, if I recall correctly, it's about 700 feet. So it sits back quite a bit. We are in receipt of Mike's review letter. I believe that was dated March 22nd. 
um, during the last planning commission meeting, we did discuss in detail um, quite a number of items. Uh, majority of those, however, are the various waivers that we're requesting, and there are a multitude of waivers which range from access drive design uh, based off of the ordinance requirements to existing features that encompass um, the, the surrounding area. Uh, we don't take any issue with those waivers, or, or rather those, those comments. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of all the waivers. However, there was one request where it was conditioned upon receiving um, comment from the authority. So with that being said, I'd be happy to talk about each and every comment, if you like, each and every waiver, if you like. Uh, but we are here this evening hoping to get conditional final plan approval along with the waiver requests. I will add to the board here, uh, the Holmans, Mrs. Holman and Bob Holman were at the Planning Commission meeting and we went down through all these waiver requests, modification requests, and they had literally had no, no issue with any of them. Um, and maybe uh, you just could summarize them quickly because a lot of them are just like little things like you said trails and, and um, existing features and, and sure yeah. I, I maybe I'll jump in just yeah, to, to kind of summarize it yeah the, um, March 26th letter in your packet summarizes the recommendations from the Planning Commission um, items one two let's go down to real quick um, one two seven eleven 13 all have to do with the access drive it's, itself and in a nutshell what what it talks about uh, is typically an access drive has to be a minimum of 20 feet wide um, what the applicants proposing because of the minimal use of the drive and the nature of the business and so forth they're proposing uh, the entrance off of 625 and you can see that they're actually proposing a wider entrance um, with larger radii out of out of the um, access onto 625, and then a necking down approach so that you can get vehicles off of the road uh, and provide some kind of staging area in that general area without widening and providing a whole lot of pavement for the remainder um, of the lane itself. There is good sight distance along that entire uh, route. Um, you can pretty much see from one end to the other, even with the distance. Uh, there is only two driveways coming off of that. Todd, is it two? One. It's one just existing. the one? One existing. Um, and then plus yours, obviously. Um, so, that, again, we asked the property owner there if they had any issues. They, they were very helpful to provide that feedback, and they did not have any. Um, 16 feet, I, I do have some roads in a lot of municipalities that are 16 feet wide. Um, and you can get two vehicles past, you have to go a little slower, but uh, the chances of, the, of that occurring where you would actually have to have two passing on a regular basis is, is very minimal, just given the nature. Um, the other waivers were all having to do with stormwater management in one way, shape, or form. Um, a lot of the issues had to do with the lack of infiltration on the site. Um, there was soil testing done throughout the entire property. Uh, very minimal, um, very marginal uh, soil conditions. Um, they do have to get an MPDS permit from DEP, so they have to satisfy all those requirements. Um, but typically the stormwater design that they're proposing would meet all of the intent uh, of what DEP would be looking for, uh, less the fact that they can infiltrate on the site. Obviously, soils can only do what they are capable of doing. Um, so that's one of the reasons behind those waivers. Um, some of the other issues all relate to the private improvements. If this would be a dedicated improvement for a street, for example, uh, we may be looking at a little different um, consideration of the waivers. But a lot of the, well, not all, all of the issues on the stormwater site are all private improvements that would have to be maintained by the individual <coughs> lot owner. So, any issues that they would have would be conditioned basically related to their site itself. Uh, wouldn't have a relation to any kind of public network that would be maintained or, or owned by the township. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything else in here. I think Todd, I think you hit on the um, some of the other issues uh, already. Yeah, are shown existing features surrounding the track or the yeah. existing um, some of the right. literal the literal requirements would have additional information shown we feel there's enough information shown on the property 
um, related to the requirement. Uh, the loan issue was related to the use of a holding tank for the commercial property. That was the one that was recommended that the Planning Commission wanted input from the sewer authority on that because it is currently served by public sewer to the existing house. Um, so that would be something that they would be looking for input. DEP would also have potentially some input on that um, related to the use of the holding tank. So if the board has any other questions, um, I can go over the additional waivers, but essentially they were, given the nature of the scope of this project, they felt that they were justified. The, the one other item that was discussed during the planning commission uh, was the uh, recommendation to add additional landscaping along the eastern property line, and the applicant has agreed to, to do that. Yes. Okay. That's number 14 on your list. Since the time of the planning commission, the applicant has um, discussed with his legal counsel and it actually has an agreement prepared for um, sign-offs of the PennDOT HOP with the adjacent property owner, uh, Ms. Holman. Um, there has been some correspondence between both legal counsels, so we anticipate that that uh, agreement will be signed here in the very near future. And then ultimately we would move forward with the HOP and getting the acceptance letter signed by by the township. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of floodplain area. There's a large floodplain there and a lot of wetlands. No, uh, no, no idea to ever stick any buildings or anything in that. That's a large floodplain area. It is. They had to provide a, a full floodplain analysis yeah. and wetland delineation. So um, what you see there, I mean, you can see the large area that's depicted with some, I've asked for some additional notes on the plan related to future structures. Uh, they're not permitted to have any essentially uh, in those areas. So there's some, there's some language on the plan to further, to further uh, justify that. It's 40%. It's, it's Good bit. That property. Good it bit. Looks like. Do you yeah. have any videos for me to turn loose in the land? No, but you can raise turtles. It would be suitable for turtles. <laughs> you raise goats are high. Billy goat, an average billy goat's $100. If it's a meat goat, 250 bucks right now. Unbelievable. Okay, we sold enough goats. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, Planning Commission did recommend to the board to uh, grant the, the waivers as they're listed on page letter or letter March 26 with one with the one condition with the holding tank would be a conditional approval based upon no negative feedback from the authority or DEB. And um, I guess the, the again we just wanted to ha have both the authorities' position on that and DEP's position, mm -hmm. and if there's no negative um, reaction to that, it'd be, we would approve it based on that condition that there's not a negative response. So if there's no other <coughs> questions or comments, I would make the motion that we all we do grant the, uh, the waivers as listed. And requested on the uh, and identified on the March 26th letter from Technicon. And like I say, with the condition on that sewage tank. I second it. Okay, the motion was made to grant the waivers and was seconded in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was one of the, yeah, I was, we can just amend them, I mean, we can amend the motion if you'd like, yeah. potentially, just to accept the, the conditional approval along with the waivers. Yeah. I was writing instead of listing. If you just want to amend that wording that included the motion. I'll amend that motion to include the final, what is the verb? This final, conditional final plan based on the Technicon of March 22. Yeah, got it. 
Have a great night. Thank you. Is there a second? No second. Okay. The motion is made in second. Does the favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, our next on our agenda is the minutes, but Carol is not able to provide the minutes to the uh, cash record, so we'll have to uh, table that until next meeting. Mm -hmm. You have the bills to be paid for the month of March. Is there any questions or comments that you might have on the bills? Is there a motion to approve them? I make a motion that we pay the bills for the month of March in the amount of ninety-seven thousand two hundred and ninety dollars and forty-five cents. I second it. Okay, the motion was made to pay the bills. Is there a motion? A second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we have your reports. You have the Roadmaster's report. And I think he's not here tonight. Let me fill you in a couple things. Okay. I met with Soil Conservation yesterday. Good. Uh-huh. And they've done projects like this other places, including where they put trot in for fish. So they explained it very well. And instead of two places that will hold water, we're going to go with three. And you mean for the fishing? Well, well, just to hold it. Oh, yep. For deeper, deeper areas. Yeah, okay. yeah. And no, I only have one question. I should have asked them. We're talking $50,000 here. Township don't pay a penny. They're not looking for any township help. But yet he stated Brubacher are going to do the work. Doesn't, isn't this when it's soil conservation have to go out on bid? I have no idea. But well, that's I the thing I should ask. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't either. I would think that they would take care of that. Um, do you, do no, you know? Because this is, this is not the first time. Yeah, I year right. after year. Honestly, I think that they take care of that. We oh, yeah, knew there's some structural documents and we didn't have a problem with it. It wouldn't be on the township at all. Yeah. But you know, it was a while ago since we reviewed everything. But it was can they just good. hire who they want? Well, sometimes they get unit prices approved. Yeah, some, you know. And then you can, it, you can accept bids if they're within that unit price. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally familiar with how they, I'm sure they have some process or there's some caveat behind it. I'm not, yeah, I would, I would think so. They're going through, they have a whole, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I, I ran into GCC recently and they were like, yeah, we have to be qualified to do municipal projects because they had to meet certain unit prices. And, okay, I've talked to Andy and both of you. Look at the bridge. Okay, let's get back. So oh. we're okay to sign the easement agreement oh. on, on, the, on the streams. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. That there. Okay. Uh, I talked to Andy about the bridge. I missed his phone call. He said both of you looked at it. Uh, he told me it's a steel pipe. A double pipe? Double pipe. How big? Eight foot. Eight foot what? Eight foot diameter. diameter. We're talking about the bridge at Souders, right garage. before you get to Souders Garage. Both, both end walls are masonry, completely yeah. closed in. Yeah. And so there's two eight-foot corrugated pipe that runs under the road. Both sides are intact. There's nothing washed out. But the center of the road has given away, and there's um like three-foot drop. And I think Andy stretched the tape measure, and he goes, if you're heading south, coming off of 625, on the, on the right side, almost the whole lane is void underneath. On the other side, facing Crest Trucking, so, uh, on the other side, 
it seemed to be still um, fill and, and solid underneath, but the, the, the whole right lane is just being held up by blacktop there, and it started that start to break through. Yeah, a bus could have gone across and just simply sank right down to its chassis. Okay. Uh, and then here's here's the thing where we always gotta say, you know, what pipes, pipes like this are gonna cost. Well, I think a lot of money. And, and would you would you replace it with a uh, galvanized corrugated pipe? Would you do like a box a box culvert bridge or whatever? And do we really are we really looking at replacing the pipe or just trying to put a band aid on under the road because the pipe could say it could last another 10, 20 years? It yeah, with the way that goes, concrete at the bottom. But the sides are probably gone. No, the sides are gone. The top, everything is just from there up. It's so just, just this is all up. there. Yeah. yeah well, then how'd you get the weight on the top? I don't know. That's it where it must have shifted down in the roots. Well, it had to go down. Because it can't go out the ends. Right. So there has to be a weight on side of that pipe somewhere. Not on the top. It's all galvanized and holding the nothing from the water level up. I thought it looked, when you look in the, the, uh, right the left, I mean the west one, yeah. yeah, it looks like the top might be bowed a little bit. Right, but there's no holes. There's it's not no really a part of the through it. Now you better take this, you're getting love notes. <laughs> no, you're getting nice Well, I, I, I think to, to replace the whole, well, first of all, I, I think he needs to take the black top off and, and discover how big the void is. Well, I can't believe there's a hole in the road. There's a little hole in the road. Yeah, and when you look down in, I should. I, I put the flashlight down inside, and it's it's like three feet down, and as far as you can see, toward the one side. So then, so that side has to have a void along the pipe. Well, I think what I think what's it, I think it's centered around the pipe. The pipes are twelve foot fender to fender apart, so there's. Probably six foot or something in the middle, and then that's where the hole is, right? In between, All of the holes in the middle. In between the pipes. Yeah, yeah. Almost dead center in between the pipes. See, the integrity of the pipe seems to still be there. Right, and most of the time, most of them are. A lot of them. Yeah, and it doesn't look like they settle. Okay. I guess you're right. Take the black top off. See what's there on the top. And then, if you can fill the bottoms with concrete and fill that middle with concrete, I don't think we're going to see a middle. I think we're, I think we're going to take the pipe off and just going to see a reset. Uh, a res, res, uh, a take the black top off. Take a dig down to the pipe if you feel it. Well, but I don't know. I, I my first thought was, do you treat it like a sinkhole and use global grout or something? Well, with a pipe like that, though, that'll continue to wash away. And the pipe won't hold its structure. Sure it, 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 it has to be coming through the ribbed areas with the heavy rains in the force going up the sides, and it loosens little by little, and somewhere it's broke loose, and the top's coming down. It didn't appear like um, there's, it's coming through the pipe. Then how did you get the hole on top? It has have to be coming through the, through the pipe. The pipe. Be, that's a big hole. I mean, it's three inch slot here. Mm -hmm. well, that's all caved out of it. It rusted through it in the bottom. It didn't come down and through the pipe. Where did the stuff on top go? It had to. It's like a sinkhole. <laughs> yeah, but. No. It had to go around. It's migrating around the outside of the pipe, and if the bottom is not in anymore, it's migrating into the stream. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a void there somewhere along <clears throat> one of them pipes all the way down. And it'll only get worse as more and more rains and more and more squishing and more and more loosens up, and it'll get worse. You have to take the black top off and see what you've got. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And go from there. I'm at the point now, I don't know if it pays the concrete and bottoms in. Did you ever try it? Yeah, we did it, but you know what? 
it only lasts so long and then you're replacing the pipe anyway. And do they make plastic pipe that big? No. No, no, no. no you have to go with steel. I think again. I found four foot is not the max. Yeah. That's a big pipe. You can only imagine what it costs. Well, back to my initial thing. Is, is it something we need to band-aid it for two, three years and then replace If that's what you want to do. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, to tear the whole thing out would be huge. Is, is there, Mike, are you, are you aware of any fabric that, let's say they take it off, they find out that it's settled pretty much down in it, pack that down and, and put down a layer of fabric so that moisture can't continue to get down through. And even like a mesh that you would compact stone with a layer of, of this fabric on every foot so that it self bridges. It self bridges. There's a lot of products out there. I mean, I would have to see, I'd like to put eyes on it and just yeah, kind of before yeah. I would say one use one versus the other. But there's a lot of products out there that you could because if we can come some way, I mean, I know they, they put parking lots on swamps by putting down fabric and then enough gravel and pack it down and it kind of bridges over the whole thing. It's, you know, you mentioned, Debbie, if um, could we concrete over the top, and then, but then at some point it has to be taken out. At some point it needs to be replaced. You so took the black top off, find where the void is. There's yeah. got to be a void there somewhere. Put rock in. It'll take at least number threes. Maybe something a little heavier. And I'm then get something tight. You want to get something well, tight. Well, you're going to, and then concrete something. Now, on if top you find where the pipe is, where, where you think you're losing it, it's, you yeah, will. I don't think there's, I think it's the whole way along because if you look in there, it's not like a funnel or anything. It's just drop from the center of the road 10 foot to the north and then another 3 foot uh, to the south. It, you know, not like a funnel, it's just a trough underneath there, the whole thing drop. So it, it, I'm thinking it's going down along the pipe kind of the whole way along. You have to take the black top off first. Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh. Well, I might say, say this, since I was on the store of already, you could probably pack up the glass. You could get glass from recyclers. They break it up into pieces that are a little bit bigger than a small stone. Maybe enough space to where it could go through. It would be cheap later. But then it would allow water to come up through it then, too. If water is coming through the pipe and coming up into the, the glass or the ballast, then you, I mean, it seems, I, I'm thinking it should be something around the pipe that's sealed like, like a clay. A clay um, sub basin or well, something the, that, that the water is tight. The water damage is not going from the top down. The water damage is what's coming through the pipe. The pipe rusted. It starts as squishing in here, releases the sediment, little stones, they fall in, and in time it hits this, you know. It looks like ribs of a skeleton, the picture, the whole bottom of the pipe. And this squishes more and more and just loose. The damage is coming from the bottom up. That's what I would say. It's not coming from the top down. So the pipe's even lower. The bottom lower on the top. It's all gone. But the sides look fine. But it has yeah, to be. Water that will come down. Down. About a quarter of the pipe. Not even that. Not even that. Okay, a fifth of the pipe has water. The rest is still the solid. But it's the water that comes down through the yeah. floors and up, and then it loosens it. it. It's just strange how, I mean, that's like, there's probably like a, a truckload of fill to fill that up. What would happen if you if we just could cut it down to the pipe, dig it, and, and put concrete there from pipe to pipe? You're okay, but it eventually, eventually, uh, it'll squish enough out of the sides to where even the pipe can collapse. And if it's still beneath the concrete, would be rooted away from the pipe that would have a void. The pipe wouldn't be struck. That pipe out here, I didn't realize it when I looked at it. 
on Pleasant Valley Road. That thing had collapsed. Yeah. Four yeah. days ago. I didn't realize it was that bad until we put the water. Are you available tomorrow morning to take a look at that? I'm not available tomorrow morning. Um, I was going to suggest to the board, it sounds like, I mean, if it's a public roadway, I mean, from a liability standpoint, I would think you would want to have some investigation to try to come up with some different options, and then you can make a decision as far as, you know, Band-Aid, you know, partial repair versus full replacement. It sounds like there's a couple of ways to, to look at it, just depending on the circumstances of how bad it actually is. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. yeah. You have the most knowledgeable man working in the township. It's the zoning officer who's done this kind of work all these years. Let him look at it with you. Did he get back from Florida yet? Yeah, he's back. But let, let Levi. Are you in the Tan, by the way? Okay. Because it depends how bad it is. It might just be, maybe you'll need a new pipe replacement. It, you well, okay. Let's, let's have let's have Levi look at it tomorrow morning when they take the blacktop off and and contact members of the board. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You already asked him to. Yeah, we well, said he was. I oh, okay, okay. I met. I was out there about yeah, five right. thirty, and uh, he was yeah. talking about it. Right now, it's closed to one lane, okay. and they have trusses trussels out in front of. Press trucking and then up at Hammer and Pat, yeah, Hammer and Pat. Lights. Yeah, with blinking lights. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that's ongoing. There's always stuff to be done on the roads. But that, if, would you replace it again with yeah, galvanized corrugated pipe if you had to? It'd probably be cheaper than a box call. It will be, yeah. But it, Generally, you move away from the corrugated yeah, metal because just because of the same reason you're years having all, right now. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the box culvert, I think we'd have to almost have some some contract. But I did, I did a, I, I yeah. did a bridge one time, or we but poured, it would last a long time. We poured a, a huge footer <clears throat> parallel with the stream, and then it was a, it was a steel corrugated dome, so it didn't have a bottom. Okay. And then they we came in and coated that with tar before it was backfilled, and then we did the end wall. But that was probably like an eight foot round, just like you know, just at the top part well, of the pipe. Well, yeah, when you go to New Bridge, they want the stream channel to remain. Yeah, you don't have that situation here. I think you'd be it would much easier to get a box culvert in this situation than you could with a new bridge. Yeah, because they want the stream bed to remain. That's why you had footers on both sides. Yeah, right. yeah. They're a mess. Well, you don't like them. No, I don't. Well, we, we, we concreted a huge weeks. channel. It does. What? Yeah. It takes weeks to do them. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we were faster. <laughs> Maybe you did a small bridge. <laughs> was it? And not a approved bridge. Okay, so you're going to... And then, uh, I don't have a degree, you know. Did anyone say anything about a degree? We're, we're looking at a box culvert, which is expected compared to, and then steel pipes have to be in there quite a while, years, uh, compared to a steel pipe that even our road goes you. I know we should get your metal industry, your masonry wing walls. No, you don't. I replaced them and never took the wing walls down. Really? Yeah, you slide the pipe right in the hole. Well, if you're going with the pipe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if we're going to a box call. No, then, then you're going to. I can yeah, it's a nice wall, wall there and those, uh, those things. OK, Levi will get with Andy tomorrow morning. And then you'll get in touch with them, and you'll you'll make a decision. No, then we'll get in touch with you. He'll get in well, touch with you. Well, he has to get in touch with all of us because yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, can, we can't wait till the next meeting to make a decision. We're gonna have to make no. one. Okay, you can do that because it's an emergency situation and ratify the action at the next meeting. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Can we actually meet? You can't. You, you mean out there all the time? In a emergency situation. In an emergency situation, yeah. But we can ratify it if you have to make any action, you know, take any action. We can ratify that action at the next public meeting. Well, something will have to be done. Yeah. There'll have to be some kind of action. Right, and you can do that. Okay, anything else in the Roadmaster's report? Yes, I did yes. ask Andy while I was on the phone. Okay. Uh, the the Fisher Lama? Yeah. Okay. I said to him, I asked him to get a hold of Wanda at the school because Wanda, every project in that park, she likes for her children to be involved. And I said to her about the rocks are going to have to be stacked, stocked up to stock the tribe. And she said her children would love to get in that stream and stack them rocks back up, you know. And so I told Andy, just before I came here, make sure you get a hold of Wanda. And hey, let the children play in the water. Stack it up. Is there any um, liability? Don't they have insurance? The school? Is it, is it the um, school? That is down yeah, there? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it would be on them. Yeah, there's someone in the stream and they fall. Yeah, that's, yeah. That would be. But we wouldn't incur liability. Yeah, no. I mean, if, if you really want to go the extra mile, you could have them sign a waiver, you know, so that they wouldn't come back to the township. I don't see that they really use the term themselves. It wouldn't be much the same as anybody else using the phone. You got it. So I don't really feel it's necessary. I mean, they have insurance to cover it. Yeah. I think you're going a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So with the children, they should build a nice rock dam. Just lay them across for their place for the tribe. I think that reminds them out to. He loves the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else in the roadmaster's room? Okay, let's move on to the engineer's report. Okay, um, I, you have my engineer's report um, of April 5th, uh, but we have several items tonight on page four. I'll just read the ones that uh, apply tonight, and I have one addition that just came in today. Um, item number one is the Justin and Tanya Game and Stormwater Project, a financial security release recommendation in the amount of $2,000. Item two is the Dean and Dawn Martin Stormwater Project, financial security release recommendation in the amount of $2,860. Item three is the RJS Investments Land Development, issued a financial security recommendation uh, to secure those improvements in the amount of $125,702.45. Item 4 is a financial security release recommendation in the amount of $7,728. We already did number 5, so I'll skip that. Number 6 is the Horse Outdoor Power Equipment Land Development financial security release for their stormwater project in the amount of $6,700. Uh, sorry, $6,700. Item 7 is the Daryl Nolt Stormwater Project. We just received that. That's under review. Uh, we have their memorandum of, of understanding for your action tonight. And one additional item that's not noted is the Meadows Phase 2. Um, that's their final maintenance security release recommendation, the amount of $148,733.12. Uh, that would complete the dedication and as builds and everything else related to that development. Close that out. And you're calling that one number 10. That'll, That'll be, be number, we'll call it number 10. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do my own again. $148,733.12. I think that you have a copy or you may have received a copy just today, dated April 9th. I just sent that one over today.
I make a motion that we approve the recommendations. I guess we can eliminate number seven. Number seven. The memorandum. Yeah. That's just receiving. You would just, just you accept, accept that, okay. actually. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion we approve the recommendations from the engineer. As presented. The way he presented. Okay. Had a motion to approve the recommendation by the township engineer. It was second. Favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, you have the um, SEO and zoning officers' reports. Do you have anything you want to add? Approve your golf game? No. Okay. Do you have anything? No, I don't. Okay. Does anybody know anything about uh, well, we're not at the park yet, huh? Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. A motion to approve the reports by the Roadmaster Engineer, SEO, and Zoning Officer. I make that motion. Okay. Motion is made to approve the reports and was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we have the uh, park and rec. So, um, there are March meeting minutes. And they're requesting uh, purchase more mulch. Two thousand uh, one hundred, um, I guess, cubic yards. Yeah, from Zeger others. The grape, the playground mulch for a total of two thousand three hundred four dollars and ninety cents. Is there a motion to approve the purchase of the mulch? I make a motion. Approve it. For two thousand three hundred four dollars and ninety cents. Is there a second? Okay, the motion is made and second to approve purchasing the playground mulch. It was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now the parking. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say they they referenced this uh, survey, but I it's not. Made it sound like it's included, but I've not received any. Okay, that's what I was. I was just going to speak a minute on that. If if uh, they come in here and go back to when the park originally started, the survey was sent out to the people. They've already had a major response, and it should all be in the book park right there on that shelf of what the people wanted. So it'll give them an idea right away. I know one of the main things was, and we didn't go along with it, was the swimming pool. <laughs> well, I looked at that list, and it is a number of pages. Yeah. But it is 25, 30 years ago now. Well, how much changed since then? Well, I think we're looking for more, maybe a little more specific uh, areas of interest. That was a really, well, you yeah, know, it is a good starting point. Like that Gaga pit. I don't think that was in there. <laughs> I've never seen anybody use it yet. Uh, that's not true. Is that who who said that? My family used it. Do you use it? <laughs> yeah. Is it fun? Yeah, it's not bad. I guess I have to have my wife explain the rules, that's all. <laughs> you, kick, you kick a ball to try to kick don't each other. Don't ask me, Art. I have no idea. I lost every time. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's, I think let them um, refine something. I know uh, they started, there was just a small um, survey generated, like one sheet. Uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, the original survey that was done as part of the park and rec plan is, is a huge uh, source of, of information. But I would just say that 30 years ago needs to change and, and maybe um, I, I would encourage to, to have them update something. Is it 30 years? It was in the um, 30 well, years. Early 90s. A long time. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> 30 you years. I don't know exactly how long. It was like 94, 95 when I purchased it. 
Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to take the time? Nothing else on the parking lot. Okay. Next, we have a old business, and the first item is um, the Act 537 plan. Over a year ago, we passed. <coughs> actually, I met Mike was included, Carol. And others met with Fred Ebert to uh, look at extending the sewer service area to include the, at that point, the recently rezoned highway commercial area. And also looking at the future growth map, which I think is um, one of these. Did that, did that. And also um, to look at how we possibly handle an expansion of light industry in this area. And um, it has taken, well, then uh, Fred presented a proposal to this board and we accepted and, and hired him to conduct a study for, for updating the uh, sewer service area. We met. Well, we had one meeting with him like two or three weeks ago, and we were looking for some more information. Um, he wasn't quite sure what he was uh, doing here and here, and, and so I, I felt I feel we need another meeting with Fred to um, discuss this some more. I guess at some point I'm asking permission here from this board that that I and Mike and Carol and Levi would conduct another meeting with Fred to try to uh, pin it down a little more. What you see in front of you on the, on the colored map and what's written in, or what's written on the, uh, in the red is the allocation of EDUs per property. And it seemed excessive. For instance, the area where um, Brubaker has the trust shop he was allocating 32 EDUs. And I, I really was challenging Fred if there's another way of determining EDUs for future. I, I, I mean, you don't want to shortchange yourself. But the, the Brubaker farm up Trostal Lane, which, uh, which, which surrounds uh, Jonathan Martin, will probably never get developed. But in order to make a contiguous um, highway commercial property, we included that area, and he has allocated 25 EDUs for that. I'd really like to try to get a more, let's say, a conservative number of EDUs um, for future growth, and if we have to do some area managing it where um, the area is only allocated so much, because the highway commercial uses the golf cart shop. The Souders Garage, the Earl Gaiman's, the Amada Buildings, the Wise Masonry. Uh, you'll see they have meters on them. You have a copy of, of the meters. Some of them are averaging one EDU per. Well, they're averaging a quarter of an EDU per quarter. So some of these uses that just have one bathroom. Um, it just seems that the highway commercial is not a, a, a high intense uh, employee type businesses there. And I'm just thinking that um, if, if it, he has suggested that we allocate 162 EDUs in that area. And, it, and, and then that compounds itself when, when he uses a number of 275 gallons per EDU. Which I understand you plan on the strong side, but the, the numbers I got from him, the beam wastewater treatment plant with eight with approximately 1,800 connection averages about 220 gallons per EDU. The uh, Kramer Mill package plant averages less than 100 gallons per EDU. The Games School package plant averages less than 100 gallons per EDU is I don't mind if he figures a high 
quantity gallons per day, but let's not do double jeopardy and then have 32 EDUs on a property that looks like they won't use it. It's, it's a target, it's a moving target trying to identify the capacity of the plant, and as Mike's in attendance tonight, um, if the study would have been done in the, the end of 2016 or 2017 when when we had normal years, it would have been a whole different ball game than doing the study after we had 2018, which was the wettest year record. And I don't know if, if, if they can take an average, a three-year average on, on capacity and stuff like that. There, but, is, um, there are guidelines for the 275 gallons. Yeah, I understand. We yeah. don't have any yeah. say with that. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. that house or nobody. Yeah. It's a DEP requirement. Yeah. Fred's utilizing um, ex established uh, engineering practices. If he changes those, it puts a red flag up to DEP. And the question is, what are you doing? You've been using a certain methodology. You need to stay with that methodology. I know what the methodology is. It makes sense. Um, we have no crystal ball, any of us, to determine if somebody like another food processing manufacturer wants to come in and use four or 5,000 gallons per day. And they're going to consume quite a few. We don't know what that could be because it is zoned and that is a possibility. So um, to not put a red flag up to DEP and ask, why have all of a sudden have you changed your method, your, your engineering practice to come up with those numbers is, is going to be suspect to the state. Um, and we want to make sure that we plan uh, long term that we don't get in a situation where we're, we're writing more checks than we can cash with capacity to the sewer plants. Um, the package plants were set up because of non-compliance consent decrees. They were not just put in by the sewer authority for no reason. DEP required that because the groundwater was, was uh, being contaminated. Um, they don't have, the, you talked about flow, we have a BOD overload in those, in those, at least one of those plants, which means we're getting more biomass coming in than what the plant was designed for. So we have to deal with that permitting issue. It isn't just how many gallons come in, it's the concentration of what's, com what's coming in that uh, can also affect what you're permitted to do or not permitted to do. So you could have, you could have 100 gallons a day per site using your rationale, but if your BOD loadings are too high, it's, it won't go anywhere with DEP. So Fred's, um, Fred's calculations and his methodology are proper for what we're doing. Um, a lot of times when you get into the sewer end of things, there's a lot of um, technical requirements that people ha who don't work in the field need to uh, get up to speed. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot of um, if ands that can come into play that we, you know, just having this simple conversation, we're, we're not going to have enough time to go over. And I always encourage people if you want to uh, get more educated into why we have to do what we do. Show up at our meetings, we're smaller groups than we have here, and we, will, we take the time to explain to anybody who comes in why we do what we do. It's not by our choice. We are required to follow uh, certain uh, protocols. We have issues with um, uh, inflow and infiltration. We're looking at that because if the flow rates are too high and we've had a very wet year, what occurs is we have no capacity to sell EDUs, and we have no control over Mother Nature because it's based on a three-year average. And Fred can certainly speak to it uh, more than me, but, um, uh, and it tells us what we are permitted to do and not permitted to do. And we, we, have, we are working very aggressively in putting a plan together that we can manage on a year-to-year -year basis uh, to eliminate a lot of the infiltration, uh, def defining if uh, some pumps are hooked up, some pump, one sump pump can put as much water into the into the sanitary sewer as 30 houses. It doesn't take long, you know, two gallons two gallons an hour or whatever for a plant, for a house versus uh, 15 gallons a minute coming out of a sewer plant. We've had or out of a uh, sump pump. We've had some places um, up off of uh, 625 that had two sump pumps running into our collection system, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's it just overloads, we're, we're treating rainwater. So this is a very big problem, which in the end, to the, to the Board of Supervisors with this, how this negatively impacts everybody is we can sell EDUs. 
Yeah, and I, th I don't think we're at the place now where either of us are throwing a, a fence or a wall. Sure. It's, um, just that, and, and Fred indicated that there, there are options, mm -hmm. so we just want to continue to talk this thing through. Right. And that's what um, I'm saying that um, I'm, not, I'm not here to tell. We hired Fred to provide his uh, professional experience. But it don't hurt to say, Fred, let's, uh, are you sure this is what you want to do? Um, and if there, well, he did talk about a way of, of a management a, a plan that you, you could allocate uh, numbers. So I really want to follow up with that a little bit and see what that leads to, because initially it was sticker shock. And it was a little bit like saying, you know, this is just really unrealistic. And, and so he did do a comparison with the highway commercial that's currently there. And all of them were like one EDUs except uh, King King's thing. So you know, it's like you know. So yeah, and I, I just think that uh, we're not quite ready to to to. I just like to discuss a little more, and I'd like to have another workshop with him, and like I say, include uh, Carol and Mike, and uh, see if we really are getting a little bit of a better comfort level than where we are now. I just encourage you if you have time. Come to one of our meetings. Yeah. And yeah. Because a lot of information changes hands and it helps you to understand what we're doing just so I don't sit here and understand what. We're yeah, doing. yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, I, we, we, so, yeah, we're not ready to, to take direction on this, but I, and Fred was more than open to to can have another sit down and yeah. talk about that because there were there were some missing stuff he didn't have and, and, and it, apparently this time of year he's really busy doing some types of. Uh, Reports yeah, yeah and it's like yeah. Uh, so just to add to that yeah. Jerry um, I actually did see an email from Fred's office I believe it was either yesterday or today yeah. Uh, yeah. Carol's out so obviously yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll he will have some more information for you so yeah. it probably is a good idea to have a meeting yeah. uh, to go over what he's come back with because uh, I know Fred Fred will have some different things for yeah him. and, and, and Fred, I'm sure he'll yeah. reiterate a lot of what we talked about the last time as well of course, Fred would like a workshop meeting with, with the entire board, and I think at this point we're still kind of hashing some things out, so that's why i um, basically asking my board members here for permission to conduct another meeting with Fred and, and, and continue to follow on this before we present a final, final plan. Mm -hmm. It does complicate stuff with the wettest year on record. Well, yeah. it's, it's our sure. Yeah. From a standpoint, we're dealing with hydraulic overloads that we've never seen before. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think there's other townships that have met before this was awarded by the COG so earlier in the month. So, so that they would have. I mean, they would. Yeah. They would have approved okay. By this yeah. Time. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion on that to somehow let, 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 let them break out our portion before we uh, approve a blind check? Do you have any comments? Okay. Under new business, you have in your packet the proposed, one of the extra counties proposed lateral ordinance. And we did see this about a year ago. We also had Roger Sauter come in here and show us a video of a lateral they determined that had a lot of uh, leakage. And I know some of us had some uh, maybe concerns or just uncomfort, but I think we need to. Um, forward to the Planning Commission to review and invite the Northern Lancaster County Authority to uh, present it to the Planning Commission that they might have more time to discuss it and take more and more of a question and then uh, look for them to make a recommendation to the board. And I would encourage you, this board member, to attend uh, that meeting, and if we invite them to the May meeting to come and express your opinions and concerns at that point with the planning commission. So, I guess my recommendation, my motion tonight would be to forward this proposed Northern Lancaster County Authority lateral ordinance to the planning commission to review and have the Northern Lancaster County Authority uh, invite them to the May planning commission meeting and either their manager or legal counsel to kind of explain what it's eight, nine pages long, so we, we want to be open. I, I do appreciate what the uh, appointees that we place on the North Niagara County and, and we appreciate your, your work and your intentions and we do want to seriously evaluate this and see if we can't come to some type of uh, favorability uh, outcome. So that's my motion, to forward to the Lancaster County Planning Commission and have the North Lancaster County at the May meeting to, uh, to present it to the Planning Commission. Sure. Um, if you can get that information over to them early on, it may allow them to generate some questions uh, at least as a starting point for the conversation. We don't have to start from a dead stop at the meeting. And that way, we are prepped to be able to provide, whether it's a video or an, an established um, response to help get things up and running and hopefully move us, move the ball uh, as far forward as we can with the, the full intentions of providing good response with good education uh, so that everybody understands what drives it, why we're here. So if they can come up with things based on what our document is, you know, give me, give me five, give me ten questions that just jump out from those folks so we can prepare uh, for that in a more uh, professional manner. Well, yes, and I appreciate that uh, <coughs> thought. The thought was that it would be in our this month's April's packet, and we would tell the Planning Commission that this will be discussed at our next meeting and try to, you know, review it and come with questions at that point. Yeah, well, I, I just think usually if both sides are prepared to answer each other's questions, you know, yeah. 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 answering questions that, that help the language, <laughs> you know what those questions are, so we can the appropriate responses so that they can uh, get better understandings, get done, and why we're driving, so the impact is on yeah, for the whole, the whole township. Yeah. So, I made a motion. Is there uh, a discussion? Yeah. Your motion actually was Lancaster County Planning Commission. You didn't even write down the township. I'm not sure. Correct. No, township. Okay. I'm just 
Yeah, I, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it rewinds. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, the, yeah. In fact, the thought process may be that um, we would discuss it briefly at the April meeting, invite you to have a representation to the May meeting, and then possibly then invite the, the Township Legal Council at the June meeting. And then, I mean, I, I there's a lot there. There's, I, I'm sure it's going to generate some interesting um, discussion, but I think we want to understand what the the objective is and to get there the best way to get there. Yeah, we yeah. 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 So, the motion to forward to the Township Planning Commission and have the North Madison County rep have representation at the May meeting to, to discuss it. I second it. Okay, the motion is made and seconded. In favor say aye. 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 Excuse me, Jerry. Yeah. Um, I did. I did text Carol about the quantities, yeah. um, and I do have those. Uh, she did suggest uh, we do have to have action on the unit prices um, of the individual highlighted items that are on this sheet. Um, I can read to you what the quantities are for Brecknock Township. You would just need to approve the unit costs that are noted in this highlighted form. So we're talking about just the the per linear foot or the per. Per square yard unit okay, costs. Well, yeah, if, if uh, all, so all the ones that are in yellow yes. are required for uh, a linear footage. That's correct. So there's three, unit three costs. items. You got a line striping, ultra thin bonded, and wearing course. And the wearing course. Or the uh, chip seal. Okay. Yeah, chip seal. So, okay, then I'll make a motion that we approve. The unit pricing for line striping, the single yellow four inch at, 40, at four and a half cents per lineal foot, the single white four inch wide line at four and a half cents per lineal foot, the double yellow four inch wide line at 9.2 cents per lineal foot, the ultra thin bonded wearing course, the ultra thin bonded course type B at $6.34 per square yard and the chip seal, um, the CRS2 PM chip seal at a dollar and 18 and a half cents per square yard. I, I second it, but I have a question. I can answer it because <laughs> I didn't prepare the bid. We're deciding to approve certain applications here that don't apply to us. I think these do. Yeah, these were all recommended by your roadmaster. Not here. What's that? The, the single where white do, lines. Where do we use a single? We don't use a single white line. Or no, wait. On the sides. On the sides, yeah. yeah. On the sides. Yep. Hmm. What's the difference between the, uh, the same price though? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Hmm. But the double, the double yellow. Yeah. Four inch wide, which reflected the is essentially double the price. price. Yeah. Plus, plus the two. Mm -hmm. Well, two tenths. Right. I did get them. Well, it's rounded. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so the motion was made to accept them unit price, and it was second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. The only thing I don't like about the whole deal is the chip seal. <coughs> it would be a waste of money. Take a drive on Boulder Hill Road. Take a drive on Orchard Road. It was put down what, less than a year ago. It's gone. If you have money like that to throw away, the township, hey. I could use some too. You could too, right? Is I, 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 I'm Do you sorry. Anything else? No. no. Just anything else? Anything else? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. We adjourn the meeting at.
Oh, gee, 20 minutes till 9, whatever that comes to. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah.